Good morning, everybody. Let's all stand, if you would, please, for the reading of God's Word found in the book of Genesis. You're recording this, right? The book of Genesis, chapter 4. I'm reading from a teacher from the Holman Standard, so if you have the King James Word, it'll be just a little bit different, but the Holman is up here on the screen. Genesis, chapter 4, starting with the first verse. Adam knew his wife Eve intimately, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. She said, I have had a male child with the Lord's help. Then she also gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel became a shepherd of the flock, but Cain cultivated the land. In the course of time, Cain presented some of the land's, uh, some of the land's produce as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also presented an offering, some of the uh, firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. The Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for, uh, he did not have regard for Cain and his offering. Cain was furious and he was downcast. And the Lord said to him, Cain, why are you furious and why are you downcast? If you do what's right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do right, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Let's pray together. Father, speak to our hearts this morning. Let us hear your voice and yours alone, and we'll ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I have always been fascinated with this particular verse of, of Scripture of how God handles this situation. Two brothers, competition in the family, uh, Cain and Abel, and of course you know the end of the story, Cain kills Abel, uh, but here's where, the, where it all starts right here, with the offering that's brought before the Lord. Now there is no Scripture that says what they're supposed to bring. The only thing that we can deduct is after the fall, God instructed Adam what to bring before him, uh, offering wise for the, the covering of the family, and Adam must have passed that down to, to his children. And so, here we come for the time that they're, they're bringing an offering before the Lord. Now understand that this is not a financial offering, this is a blood covering offering that would cover the sins of, of the family. And so, uh, if you go back and look at this, uh, go back one slide, uh, go back one more. Go back one more. Let's start at the beginning. Adam knew his wife. She gave birth to a son. She called him uh, Ain. She also uh, Cain. She also gave birth to his brother Abel. And let's go forward. Uh, now Abel became a shepherd of the flock, but Cain cultivated the land. In the course of time, uh, Cain presented some of the land's produce as an offering to the Lord. So he took produce. Doesn't sound like something that's you know off here. Again, I, I believe what's happened is that Adam has instructed them on what they're supposed to do, and Cain doesn't bring exactly what he's supposed to bring. He brings produce. It doesn't cost him much. He's a farmer. He, this is stuff he has. But Abel also uh, brought. Uh, go forward. Presented an offering and some of the firstborn of his flocks and the fat portion. And so when they bring this, here's one bringing some stuff uh, from some fruits and the other bringing uh, the fat portions of his, of his uh, flocks, some, uh, the firstborn of his flocks, which is very important. The Lord regarded Abel's. He liked Abel's. But Cain, he didn't. He didn't have regard for Cain's. And so the next slide says, uh, Cain got very upset. He was mad. He was angry. His face was downcast. And the Lord asked him, what were you mad about? You had instruction. Your father told you what you were supposed to do. You chose not to do what was required. Why are you downcast? And this is the verse that has always just fascinated me uh, and has been a rule that, that I've tried to live by in my life. If you do what is right. Won't you be accepted? So I want to talk to you this morning about do, doing what is right. That's something that you, you'll hear my kids if they tell you. I'm always preaching that to them. Do what's right. What's the right thing to do? Now, they don't always do it. How I many of y'all know that? 
But that's the thing I preach. What is right? How do you do things? Do things the right way. Now, right is just not doing it excellent, but right's doing things the way you're supposed to do it, the way the Lord instructs us to do it. You've got scriptures, 66 books in this Bible that will tell you how to live your life and do it the right way. It will tell you how to interact with people and do it the right way. It will teach you how to treat your neighbor, your brother and sister, and do it the right way. It will teach you how to live a life and work on your job and do it the right way. I'm convinced that if we'll do what this says, that we will live and look back at the end of our lives and say, you know what? We were better for this than we were without it. We were better people. We were better citizens. We were better neighbors. We were better church folk. We were better people because we did what this book says. And so he says, if you do what's right, won't you be accepted? That's a very valid question that God asked Cain. There's no reason for you to be upset. There's no reason for you to be mad. There's no reason for you to be angry. All you have to do is do the right thing. Now we're living in a society today that, that obviously doesn't understand what doing the right thing looks like. Because we're living in a society that has disregard for the law, disregard uh, respect, disregards authority, disregards uh, all kinds of things. And they call, they, what they're doing today is calling wrong good and good wrong. But it still goes back to what the scripture says. If you do the right thing, you're going to be, you're going to be okay in the eyes of God. And so if I just had a couple things I jotted down. Doing what's right is not always what's easy. Doing what's right is not always what's easy. Here's the thing that fascinates me about this is that we preach this to our children. Do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing. And somehow or another we get older and we forget that, that we're supposed to be doing that ourselves. And so we fight, we fuss, and we, we carry on amongst each other. We, we can't get along on our jobs. We can't get along in our families. Doing what's right is not always what's easy. You do the right thing, you're going to take some hits. Because in our society, in our culture, doing the right thing is actually going against the grain. Everybody is so easy to swim upstream with everybody else, what they're doing, carrying on. Well, go on, do it, because everybody else is. Okay, just, you know, this old saying we teach our kids, if everybody else jumped off a bridge, are you going to do it too? Doing what's right is not always what's easy. He took the easy way out. I'll just bring some fruits here. You know, after all, it doesn't really matter. What, what's, what's the big deal? That's what I do. It, you know, if I go get a, a calf, it's going to cost me something. If I offer some for, uh, fat portions, I may have to go get some money out of my pocket. Now, after all, I've got this laying over here anyways, you know, and, and we'll just do this. I remember one time in the church, we, had a, we, were, we were bringing in food. for. Uh, we were giving out boxes, food boxes. And I went through the pantry this one day and began to look at some of the food that was in there. And I thought, my Lord, what in the world is wrong with these people? They would stuff in that thing like fried okra, cabbage greens, boiled cabbage. Now let me ask you something. How many of y'all going to eat some pickled eggs? Well, y'all got issues. There's something wrong with y'all. And so I went back and said, okay, hold on here a minute, folks. If, if you wouldn't eat this, don't bring it to the food pantry and just say, well, they're poor. They need something. We'll just give them. Ain't nobody going to eat the boiled cabbage. I'm pretty sure about that. You take it home. You get a food basket and you got, fa you got 10 year olds in the house and you say, we got a food basket from the church. What well, we got in it? You say, boiled cabbage. I don't think nobody in that house is going to be real excited about eating boiled cabbage. Tastes like paper. I've tried it once. <laughs> the right thing to do is, you know, what's the right thing to do in that situation? Get the stuff that you would eat. Do what's right. Sometimes in life we try to take shortcuts. We try to cut corners. But do the right thing. It's not going to be easy. It's going to cost you if you do the right thing. If you take a stand for righteousness. If you take a stand for the Word of God. If you take a stand on living your life the right way. It's going to cost you something. It's not easy. But anything I believe worth having is not easy. 
And it's worth standing and making a standard decision. You know what? This is what I'm supposed to do because this is what the Word of God says I'm supposed to do. Say about me what you want, but I'm going to live in accordance to the Scripture and the Word of God. Look at the Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy says something about uh, doing what's right. Do what is right. Deuteronomy 6.18 Do what's right and good where? In the Lord's sight. Do what's good and, and right in His sight. So that you may prosper and that you may enter and possess the good land the Lord your God swore to give to your fathers. Now he's telling the children of Israel as they're getting ready to go into the promised land. If you'll do the right thing, you do what God asks you to do, you do what's right in his eyes, then God will bless you, he'll take care of you. So when you're in traffic and somebody cuts you off, your flesh is that you want to just tear, tell somebody off. Some of y'all may have it so bad that you're willing to chase down a car to let them know exactly what they've done wrong. But instead of flipping them the bird, instead of cutting Cussing them out, just say, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. You cut me off. Do what's right in the Lord's eyes. I ask, generally when my kids ask me a question, what I think, I always answer them with another question. What do you think's right? What do you think's right? Willie slaps me in the face. What do you, what am I, what's right? Hit him back. <laughs> that come from y'all side over. <laughs> well, the scripture says what? Turn the other cheek. Now I had I had a I had a uh, old fella in church that he knew this guy and he said uh, he said the, the fellow would say you know smack you in the face, turn the other cheek. He said, but after that, old boy, you in trouble. <laughs> do what's right. What's the right thing to do? The right thing to do is to love your neighbor. The right thing to do is to do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. The right thing is to honor the Lord, obey His commandments. The right thing to do is live a, a quiet and peaceful life. The right thing to do is to honor God with your resources, honor God with your time, honor God with your talent. The right thing to do is to, to love and to be patient. The right thing to do is to uh, consider others ahead of yourself. The right thing to do is to make this world a much better place than what we, what we found it. And so he said, do what's right in the Lord's eyes. Again, we've got 66 books that gives us the instruction of what is right in the Lord's eyes. How we treat each other. How we love each other. How we conduct our business. I know people that are Christians that, that are business people and, and when they get into the business stuff you wouldn't even know that they're Christian. In every aspect of our life we're to do the right thing. In every aspect. Whatever the dealing is, do the right thing. It's not too much to ask. That's what God has asked us. And He says that when you do the right thing, here's the benefit. You're going to prosper. You're going to prosper. Your good things are going to come to your way. Look at, uh, look at Psalms 34, 19. Look at Psalms 34, 19. Many adversities come to the one who is, who is righteous or does the right thing. But the Lord delivers him from what? How many of it? Few of it? All of them. Many adversities come to the one who's doing the right thing. That's what that's saying. So when you do the right thing, expect troubles to come. Because you're going against the grain. You're swimming upstream. But when you do the right thing, the Lord will deliver you from anything that comes along your way. That's a promise that God has given us. You do what's right, I'll take care of you. You do what's right in the Lord's eyes, I'll take care of everything else. I remember one time I was, uh, I was put in a, a challenging situation. I worked for a man that uh, had access to the company credit card. Matter of fact, he was responsible for it. He pulls me to the side one day and it's Christmas time. He says, I, here's the cr company credit card. I want you to go to Kmart up the road and I want you to uh, buy... I want you to buy a new microphone. 
He said, oh, here's the company credit card. I want you to go up here. There was like five of us in, in this particular office. He said, I want you to buy everybody a Christmas gift from me. And I said, now hold it a minute. How am I buying everybody Christmas gifts from you if you're giving me the company credit card? That's not from you. That's from the company. He said, well, here's the deal. He said, there's a $1,000 limit on here today. Buy anything up to $999. You got my permission to buy whatever you think that you want to buy for the guys in the shop. $999. Just sign my name to it. Y'all realize what he was asking me to do, right? So being the studious employee I was, I figured, well, I could at least get out of work for an hour or so. So I got in the van and I went to Kmart. And the more I walked around that store, the more the Spirit of the Lord just dealt with me there. This is not this man's money for you to go spend. It's not his money to give you permission to go spend, especially if it was company material or uh, stuff like that. That's one thing. He's asking you to go buy gifts for, for people that he doesn't have permission to buy gifts from. And so the more I walked through that store, I felt guilty. The Lord just dealing with me. So I get back in the van, go back, and he, I, I go into the shop, hand him the credit card back, and he said, well, let's go out to the van. I'll help you pack the stuff in. I said, ain't no, no need to. He said, why? He said, because there ain't nothing to pack in. He said, you mean tell me you went up there and I'll give you instruction on what to do and you didn't buy anything? I said, man, Kmart was out of everything. <laughs> Let me just say that his and I's relationship was never the same after that. Because he felt like I had disobeyed him. I got some adversity from that. Six months after that, I, it, was, it got so tough that I had to transfer back to, an, back to the original apartment I came out of because he put the pressure on so hard because he felt like I didn't do what, what he wanted me to do. But listen, what he was asking me to do was not only unethical, it was illegal. It wasn't right. It cost you sometimes to do the right thing. Some of you young people in the room, you're getting ready to find out that it's going to cost you to do the right thing. It's easy to go along the grain with everybody. Everybody laughing, picking on another kid, making a joke. They're fat, they're ugly, they look funny, they talk funny, they do this wrong, they do that wrong. And so everybody just laughs and piles up. It's, it's really going against the grain when you stand up and say, hey, no, we, they, hey, he can't help that. He can't help where he was born from. He can't help how he was born. He can't help it that his parents live on that side of town. He didn't have a choice in that. Some of y'all are going to find uh, the right thing to do when you're pressured to do the wrong thing. When people want to offer you drugs or alcohol, you're going to figure out what's the right thing to do. And sometimes when you go against that grain, they're going to make fun of you and they're going to laugh at you. But who you look at? Goody two shoot. Look at them. But again, the Bible says if you'll do the right thing, God will take care of you. Do what's right. The other thing I want to say to you this morning, and my sermon is not long today because it's, it's simply just doing the right thing. Secondly, knowing what's right doesn't mean much. Knowing what's right doesn't mean much until you're willing to do what's right. Knowing what's right doesn't mean much until you're willing to do the right thing. Look at James chapter 4 verse 17. For the person who knows to do good and doesn't do it is what? Now you may have not ever thought about it that way, but when you know the right you're supposed to do and you don't do it, you're sinning. When you know how you're supposed to treat somebody and you refuse to do it, you're sinning. When you know how you're supposed to conduct yourself in the workplace and you don't do it, it's sin. When you know that you're not supposed to take something that doesn't belong to you and you do it, sin. When you come to a revelation that, that something's not right for you, maybe, maybe you shouldn't drink, maybe you shouldn't smoke, God's revealed that to you and you do it anyways, guess what? Sin. So people ask me all the time, well, preacher, what do you think about, well, what do you think about drinking? What do you think about playing the lottery? What do you think about all these things? Here's a simple question that, that I'll throw right back at you. What's your spirit tell you? What's your spirit tell you? If you have to buy the lottery ticket out of town so nobody sees you buy it, guess what? There's your answer. Now, 
If you buy them, that's between you and the Lord. I'm, that's, that's up to you. That's between you and Him. Here's what I'm saying. When you ask me those questions, what does this say? What does this say? That's always a rule of thumb of how to answer any question about what you've got going on in the life. As a believer, what does this say? If I have to sneak and do it, guess what? I probably might not be doing it to begin with, right? Because I know, because if I'm sneaking to do it, then there's something that tells me that it's not right. Have you ever noticed that strip clubs and most bars are open when? At night. Why? So that you can do those things under the cover of darkness so that people won't necessarily see you uh, going in or out. If you've got to do that stuff where nobody can see you under the clothes of darkness, probably the best rule of thumb is don't do it at all. So if you know the right you're supposed to do and you don't do it, the Scripture says it's sin. Well, it ain't written in the Ten Commandments, though. I don't see it in there. And there'll be things that'll be a shade of gray that maybe the Bible doesn't cover. Again, the rule of thumb, what's your spirit tell you? Because here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. You are have the living Holy Spirit of God on the inside of you as a believer. When you got born again, not only did God forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness and cast your sins as far as the east is from the west, He also done something a little extra. He put His Spirit on the inside of man and woman. So not only does God, God love us, and not only does God uh, waiting for us in heaven, but while we're here on earth, God is living on the inside of us as believers. And so we have to answer the question now. When we used, how many of you know that before you got saved, you used to be able to do whatever you wanted to and it didn't bother you? When you got born again, you tried to still do those things, but there was friction. That's the Spirit of God living on the inside of you saying, don't do this, don't do that. Do what's right. And he says here, if you, if you don't do the right thing and you know to do it, you're sinning. And so I, I, that convicts me. That, that passage of Scripture convicts me a lot. <laughs> Because there's things that I know that I should have done that I don't always do. You ever have those moments when you just, you know, it's, it's just easier to go along and get along? And we all give into that stuff. We all give into those moments. You know, I'm not going to cause no waves here. I'll just keep my mouth shut, not say anything, and then that, that'll, you know, that'll, that'll just remove me out of the situation. But I still knew I was supposed to do the right thing. And if I don't do the right thing, when I know to do it, then God is holding that against me. It's not easy to do the right thing. It's not easy to love your brothers and sisters. It's not easy being a Christian in a workplace. It's not easy when people accuse you to hold your tongue and not say nothing. It's not easy when people do you wrong instead of re, re, uh, flying back at them. It's, it's not easy to go get on your knees and just pray and say, okay, God, you deal with this. It's not easy to live in a world that says that right is wrong and wrong is right. But I still believe that right is right and wrong is wrong. And we got to do the right thing. Because here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. All of us, understand this, everybody in this room is going to stand before God one of these days. Every one of us is going to stand before the living God. And He's going to, he's going to ask us for an account of all the things we've done in our lives. And I'd hate to have to stand before God and say, God, I didn't do that because it was too hard. I didn't do that because it felt it was not easy. I didn't feel like it that day. I didn't love my neighbor because after all they got on my nerves and I just, you know, God, I, did, I couldn't do that no more. I want to stand before God and hear Him say, Welcome in thy good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear. So for me to be able to hear that, now I've got to do what I need to do, and that means I've got to do the right thing in the eyes of God, according to the Scripture. 
And when I do the right thing in the eyes of God, I know adversity is going to come, but He's also promised me that when the adversity comes, He's going to deliver me out of all things. So let me ask you the question this morning. Are you doing, what, are you doing the right thing? Are you doing what's right? Or is there some friction down inside of you this morning when I'm talking about these things that, you know, there's an area in my life that, that I'm not fully surrendered over to God. When I was a young man, I was an angry young man. I used to be mad at everything. Mad at everybody, mad at everything. I, ripped, I took more shirts like this and popped buttons off of them. I thought I was Hulk Hogan. Pam would make me mad. I grabbed that shirt from the top and just pull it apart. Wow. Broke more remote controls against the wall because I was just mad about everything. Didn't know why I was mad, I was just mad. And maybe that's the thing of a young man, but now I realize I'm older now. I've got gray in my hair. I don't want to be mad no more. So it's an area in my life that I have had to really work on not losing my cool. So I just, you know, whatever. I don't let things bother me like I used to. Whatever, man, I don't care. Don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. You know. Don't worry. Be happy now. You know. Hey. I don't let stuff bother me like I used to. But what this comes with is a maturity in Christ. Knowing that I am a believer. I am supposed to live different than the rest of the world. I'm supposed to act different than the rest of the world. I'm not always going to do that the, exactly right. But I should be striving every, every day to do the right thing. Should be my goal. God, show me what's the right thing today to do. So when you walk into work tomorrow morning and somebody gets on your nerves and you're just natural tendency, well, let me tell you something, sucker. God, show me the right thing to do. Because, hey, after all, listen, you don't know what's going on in their background. You don't know what's going on in their life. They may have just had a weekend from hell. They may have got news that there was, uh, they had a health issue. They may, have been, they may have been verbally abused by a spouse. We don't know. So when, it, when I'm tempted tomorrow, how, I'm go, how am I going to react? God help me. You show me how to do this. Because God, after all, you know I can't do this on my own. You help me. And he said when we do that, when we do the right thing, we're going to prosper. So let me ask you, and I'm going to close with this. What is it in your life that you need to do the right thing in? I want you to think about that for a minute, really seriously, because all of us have areas in our lives that we need to be better at. Every one of us. And maybe we've slacked off in areas that we, that we haven't paid as much attention to and we've just sort of gone back in the old habits that we used to have. Maybe it's something as simple as that we're just, you know, we have this nonchalant attitude about going to church. I'll go when I, you know, if I decide to, I'll go. If I don't, I don't care. Do what's right. What's the Bible say? The Bible says you're supposed to go. If you find yourself being frustrated and aggravated with people all the time, maybe you've slipped back in that old habit. Okay, Lord, remind me what it was like before, you know, where I came from. When I got saved, I was lost and miserable and on my way to hell and you forgave me. Help me to have patience with people. Help me, help me to love people. Help me to see people through your eyes. Maybe you go to work and you're aggravated because you feel like you're underappreciated and you don't feel like that, that you're getting your fair share. You don't feel like you're getting the, the financial repercussions that you deserve. You go, you just, okay God, maybe they're not doing me right, but you are my resource, not that job. You've given me a job to be productive, but you ultimately are my resource. I will trust you that even if they don't see it, you will and you'll make the record right at some point. I'll do the right thing. So I'll work hard, I'll show up on time, I'll do what they asked me to do. He, God told Cain, if you do what's right, won't you be accepted? And I would submit to all of us today, if we do what's right, God's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Let's stand our